Hi. Uh, uh, as mentioned, I'm Dr. Van Vliet. I, I'm going to speak a little bit uh, uh, towards just photo damage and how to prevent cancer rather than skin cancer per se. Uh, just uh, I, I was setting this up for a fairly short talk and you can just talk for hours just about any one cancer. So uh, rather than get too much into the surgical end of things of what I do, it's more about the messaging that comes from myself and my office in terms of how to prevent damage. Because certainly that, uh, if you prevent the damage, you don't get frequent flyer points with me. Um, I, I remove a, a lot of cancers. Uh, my skin cancer practice has definitely grown over the past 14 years here at Southlake, and I really do enjoy it. Again, it's more the surgical excision of cancers and and uh, and or the reconstructions that occur. And uh, certainly, the bread and butter uh, the bread and butter ones are, are, are as such as a basal cell carcinoma. They're the most common skin cancers. They're not very lethal; that they rarely run amok, but they can get into very cosmetically challenging areas. Remove a lot of them in around eyelids, on lips, in the nooks and crannies of years where we forget uh, uh, to get coverage. And so it's not that, that it's life or limb, but they can be a little bit complex reconstruction. And, and certainly uh, uh, these are some of the common areas. Uh, skin cancers as a group, uh, basal cells, squamous cells, and melanomas are in fact the most common type of cancer that's going to uh, uh, hit someone over the age of 50. It's, it's far surpasses breast cancer, prostate cancer, any of the rest. The good news is most of it, outside of the fact that it usually requires therapies and or surgery, most of it isn't probably going to shorten your lifespan unless you get unlucky enough to get a melanoma. Melanomas are the more sinister of the group. They probably constitute about 5% of all skin cancers, but probably about 80% of all the deaths from skin cancer. So, so it's definitely a baddie, uh, 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 and so, it, and it's also on the rise, which is somewhat surprising, but appears to be uh, occurring. So, uh, from my perspective, I probably get equal parts. The, this is a squamous cell that grew very rapidly on someone's elbow, just to get perspective on that, and right into joint in a matter of a month or so. So they can be pretty aggressive, the squames. They're kind of intermediate aggressiveness. The basal cell is the least aggressive. Uh, uh, so the skin cancer group, they usually end up uh, uh, being sent in either through family physicians or dermatologists. The dermatologists are very good at early diagnosis and often topical managements. But if, thing, if things require surgical excision, you get sent to one of our plastic surgery team pretty quickly. Uh, uh, and certainly that was the case here. Uh, I also have a fairly extensive just skin rejuvenation practice, which means, you know, how do you create good skin? Uh, and, and with plastic surgery and dermatology, that overlaps quite a bit because uh, we're both handling the skin envelope quite a bit. And certainly the, the majority of the people I see in this corner who are, it's more like vanity measures of how do I look good in my 40s, 50s, and 60s, they might seem like a desperate group. This group is probably just going to start some topicals and get some laser treatment to get that weather beaten look at least somewhat reversed. Uh, this group is going to the ORs to get more serious problems managed. But the underlying uh, uh, issue here is all photo damage. It's all the same underlying cause. They've all seen too much sun. Uh, so they may seem like a disparate group with disparate kinds of uh, intentions, but the bottom line is they're there for the same reason. It's just some people are getting into more trouble, and they're probably just maybe five years out or ten years out in the in the in the uh, aging uh, process because this person is well on route to this. Uh, uh, and you know, outside of the fact that their treatment modalities might be a little bit different, certainly by the time treatment has been instituted, then the take-home message is please get smarter around the sun and please protect what you've got left because the more you continue to insult the skin envelope, it's definitely a cumulative process. And so, you know, a lot of the skin cancers that we get in the present day as perhaps a 50 year old has everything to do with what you're doing as a teenager. And that's kind of scary because I was crazy as a teenager in terms of sun. I think one of the common misconceptions I see in my practice, and I, I had all of them myself as a young person, I was very outdoorsy, I didn't burn easily, so you think, what's all the fuss about? Tan makes me actually feel 
and look kind of healthy. Uh, and there was that sense that the darker you were, the better it was. It was almost like it was one of the objectives of going to the cottage or going south was to go and get a tan. Uh, and, and so unfortunately, that has come back to bite me. I've had a number of basal cells treated early. Uh, but it's really uh, been a take home message for me of, I can't really undo in a significant way the, the sins of my past. It's gone, uh, but I can get really smart now and at least have a little bit of method to the madness in terms of uh, how I approach being outdoorsy, because I'm still very much out there. So it's not about cutting back, but it's about being smart. Uh, this is a, a, an example of, in fact, identical twins. Uh, they're in their 50s. Uh, I think I don't have to tell you which one was using a bit of block or sunscreen and which one was not. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the issue comes up over and over again. Uh, of there's a big difference. Just, in, you know, we're genetically endowed uh, uh, with, uh, you know, a certain constitution. And then it has everything to do with what we do with our lives in terms of whether we're, we're fit and healthy and all those good things. So certainly... How, how well we nourish ourselves has a lot to do with having a better skin envelope. But the vast majority of what we see here is truly just extensive photo damage. That's just all due to UV radiation. So the hyperpigmentation, the lines, if you were to touch that face uh, versus this face, this would be smooth. This would be roughened with all kinds of actinic keratoses, which are kind of the precancerous changes. So, so there, there's just, you know, the important thing is, this is a natural aging. Uh, much of what we think is natural aging isn't true. If you take a look at yourself, uh, you know, and, and where the sun doesn't shine, perhaps, you know, on your buttock, let's say, uh, take a look at that skin. That skin is way different than what you've got on your face, on your head and neck, and on your forearms. The damage you see here is just because you've had exposure. The lack of damage there lets you know that skin envelope's, in my case, still 55 years old, uh, but it just hasn't seen a lot of sun and sure in a lot better shape than my chest wall is. Uh, and, and so it, it really behooves us to have a strong respect for we can really impact the aging of the skin envelope. We're definitely gonna get thinner skin. We're gonna get a little less elasticity of the skin as we age, there's no question. But, but you know how you can have beautiful skin in your 50s and 60s and 70s. So it's always about just looking great for your age, and that means you know taking good care of uh, your skin. So I I, I I get on dentistry quite a bit because I really admire kind of the public health mes messaging around dentistry. There's something they've done really right that we haven't seemed to do with skincare. We all know we got to brush our teeth. You know, even if you're tired, you're going to brush your teeth before you go to bed and you get up and you're going to brush your teeth. And you know, there might be, you know, many choices of toothpaste and flosses and all that. But I think we've all been pretty well trained that it's not really optional. It's not really like, oh, what will I do today? It'll be, I'm going to brush my teeth. And so dental hygiene is like through the roof improved. There's, you know, in young children, you hardly ever see any dental caries anymore. People have beautiful smiles. Uh, and it's just because we've been properly trained. In, in my industry, in the skin industry, uh, it's crazy. Uh, you know, uh, the, the marketing around skincare products is huge. And it's a, it's a big money maker. And I think the biggest thing that I see is a whole lot of confused people coming into my clinic. They're all spending tons of money on skin products. They got anti-wrinkle cream. They got lotions and potions. They're spending money on skin products. But there's absolutely no method to the madness, absolutely no sense of what the appropriate thing is, what really works, what doesn't. And part of it is just because it's just such a marketing complex. So I think it's, it's unfortunate that somehow, you know, I think the dermatologists really speak of, you know, use the SPF, use it. But I, I, there's something incredibly not sexy about that. There's something that just doesn't grab people. Uh, and so I think I'm, I'm amazed at, you know, how many frequent flyer uh, uh, people I have in my clinic where I'm just constantly chipping away at skin cancers, especially on men with their scalps and their ears. Uh, lips are very common because these are very neglected and overseen kinds of areas. And, and yet, you know, it'll be a cloudy November day and you'll go, have you got your sunblock on? And I go, of course not. You know, I'll, I'll save it for that golfing day, that nice night. Uh, you know, I might put it on tonight. But question to you all, this morning, I think we all woke up to rain. How many people put their SPF on before they left home today on a rainy day? 
So if, good, Shirley. <laughs> so, so, but, but it's just a case in point. And, and you know, it, it's, um, I think it's because, I think we think we're being good when it's a sunny day and we go, I'm going to wear a hat and I'm going to put my SPF on, good for me. But then there's, and that's about three months of the year. And then, you know, we might do crazy stuff in the winter, especially winter like we just went through. You know, you go to Maui or you go to, you know, Cancun, and you just get this, you know, one to two weeks of, like, full-on sun. That kind of, you know, bouts of just we're out there and we're just doing intense bouts of exposure, incredibly dangerous uh, to the skin envelope. It's very stressful and very high setup for melanoma, especially those intense bursts of activity. And so... We can't help it. We're good northerners. We need to kind of break up the winter and we need to get out here now as much as we can. So it's, uh, truly the messaging is don't not be out there. But, you know, maybe take some hints from the locals. When you go to Mexico, they're on siesta between 10 and 4 o'clock. There's a reason. And, and we're all in the chaise lounges, you know, putting on our SPF. So I, I think <laughs> there's a little take home message. In, in terms of being careful. So obviously this is obviously the, the very big messaging. This was, uh, there's something about Mary. I love this woman in this movie. I just thought, she, you know, she had the tin foil and the cigarette. And I mean, if, if you ever wanna do a double whammy to destroy your skin, be a cigarette, you know, smoker, heavy smoker on a chaise lounge. It's just, uh, you know, a double injury. It's just atrocious. Uh, and there's just, uh, it's really hard to come back from that. But. But it's it's definitely uh, it's it's definitely the worst thing you can do for your skin. But I think you know I probably I'd be preaching to the converted here. Probably a lot of you put on a hat. Yeah, you know, I think the majority of us are in our middle years plus, and you know you put on a hat and you put on your SPF on a glorious day if you're going to be outside. But I think the misconception that I see very commonly, and I had it in my early days, was it's a sunny, warm day. Of course, I'm going to put on my SPF. You know, uh, even when I've learned the hard way that, you know, you don't get a suntan, you know, suntan's passe. You know, there's nothing healthy about a suntan. Even when I learned that, I still didn't think November warranted any SPF on my face as I walked out the door. But the problem is with the UV spectrum that hits our skin, we're all thinking about block the UVB. That's the stuff that gives you a tan, your freckles, your aging spots, your burns. Uh, that's only 5% of the spectrum that is damaging your skin. So we're all thinking, okay, I've done a great job. I blocked that 5%. I didn't have a burn today, and I was out in the golf course all day long. But, uh, you know, uh, most of the year we've got tons of UVA passing through. Our UVB might not be that strong in November on a cloudy day, but your UVA is coming through strong, and that's, and that's hitting our skin envelope at a very deep level, and it's damaging the elastin, it's damaging the collagen, all that stuff that gives your skin good elasticity and connectivity and makes it kind of tight and toned. Uh, and, and it's also uh, very much where a lot of... Uh, pigment is, is hit. So uh, if we're not blocking for the UVA rays, even the ones that come through clouds uh, or come through windows, uh, uh, we're still high set up for melanoma and we're certainly a big set up for photo aging. So it's uh, November and it's cold. The question is, are you wearing your sunscreen? I'd probably say the majority of us would say no. So I think the, the biggest thing I've learned about that, because I think the good news is a lot of the sunscreen formulations are getting really good. They sit really nicely on your face. I, I think the, the biggest thing I've learned is, I think the most expendable part of my very simple skincare regimen personally is moisturizer. I don't even put it on. If you have a beautiful, uh, if you get a good sunscreen for your face, you will get all the moisture you need. If you still add a need, need a little bit of moisturizer, you add a little bit of antioxidants, which actually kind of supercharge your, your uh, sunscreen. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And, and you likely won't need any other skin products. So if, if you put, if you only had one product that you were gonna buy, you're a limited budget, I'm not gonna spend all this money on all this skincare. Number one anti-ager, SPF. So it's definitely the way to go. So in terms of UV spectrum that comes through our ozone, it's all UVB and UVA. 95% is the UVA. Uh, those are the long wavelengths, uh, longer than the UVB. And the longer wavelengths, uh, this is the skin. And the, the thinner layer on top is the epidermis. This is where our basal cells are, where basal cell skin cancers come from. 
And if this is this thin layer is this in cross section here. So if we look at this, the basal layers are here, the squamous layers are here, and that turns into squamous cell carcinoma, and then we have our melanocytes down deep. And so if you think about these UVA rays hitting more deeply, big setup for melanoma. So you gotta make sure your sunscreen is broad spectrum uh, or a physical block uh, so that you're taking care of UVA and UVB or else you're gonna, here, uh, you're gonna damage your collagen, you're gonna damage your elastin, you're gonna damage the melanocytes. And so melanoma wrinkles, you know, and so, so and that's 95% of the spectrum. And most of our uh, sunscreens are only dealing with this. So UVA won't give you a suntan, it won't give you a sunburn, so you won't even know you've had too much exposure. So let's say you're gardening all day, or you know, in an October day and it's kind of cloudy and overcast, you're putting the beds, you should still have an SPF on. There's tons of UVA out there. And, and so I, I think that's where a lot of people are truly missing the boat. And if it just becomes part of the regimen, if you put that lovely sunscreen that sits so well on your face, right beside the toothpaste and the toothbrush, you're, you're kind of apt to do it first thing in the morning. So uh, just to review, UVA uh, is the long wave. It's pretty well present all day long, no matter whether it's cold or hot. Uh, I, it's gonna uh, not give you any immediate feedback that you've had too much, so you're gonna be pretty blind to the fact that you got too much UVA, even though it's 95% of the UV radiation coming down on you and you're gonna get hit later. So it's the primary ager of the skin. It's gonna damage the collagen and the elastin. Uh, so it's kind of, it's hard to preach to, to young people about that uh, because a lot of them even like deep tans. But, but you know, you love the feel of, uh, you know, and the look and feel of a tan. It feels good while you're lying in the sun. But even if you're blocking UVB, it's very hard for people to understand, you know, yeah, you're not gonna get any kind of sense that you've done anything off, but you know, catch yourself in a couple of decades and you've got a problem in Houston. It's pretty hard to reverse that stuff. Here is, this is a part of, I don't, it was probably about a year or two ago where, I think it was in Britain, there was this, all these studies coming out that there's a lot of left-sided skin cancers, especially in truck drivers or people who drove a lot. Uh, and, and it just goes to show, I mean, I think most of the time those people probably had their window up. I don't think they were just hanging out their window. So UVA goes right through windows. So even if you have a beautiful corner office with windows, uh, you're getting a lot of UVA. It's coming right through our beautiful solarium. I love sitting in my solarium. That's a lot of window. And so you can get the sense that you're inside and safe, but you're really not. You're still getting a lot of damage there. So, so a classic example of a truck driver who has a lot of photo damage in general, but really this left side uh, is distinctly more uh, damaged than, than the right, just based on his ex relative exposure. So, you know, this is kind of, you know, people that you can see on the beach, good Canadians down for the week in Mexico. <laughs> and, and, and this is more of what we're all like, oh, don't get a burn, don't get a tan. This is all the UVB. UVB is gonna get, it's 5% of the spectrum. It definitely causes a lot of photo damage. It definitely causes a lot of basal cell and squamous cell and some element of melanoma. So it's a big cancer maker and it's a big ager in terms of hyperpigmentation and all that good stuff. But that's, you know, when, when you're getting the UVB rays, they vary quite a bit during the year and during the time of the day. So, you know, between that 10 to four o'clock, your UVB, UVB is coming through the most, doesn't pass through windows. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be real high end, uh, uh, you know, in, in November. Uh, so, uh, so from our perspective, almost all of the early preparations of sunscreens were all about you know, let's really block the shot and make sure we're not getting burns or tans, but we were really missing the boat on the UVA. So the, the take-home message really is just go for broad spectrum and make sure you're covered for both. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, th this guy can go home and go, I, I guess I made a mistake. So what's in an SPF? SPF just means sun protection factor. And there's a whole bunch of chemical compounds uh, uh, for the chemical component of, uh, of uh, sunscreens, uh, many of them too long a name to, to remember, and I don't think it's that important. I think that the big thing to catch on to, everyone's gonna find a formulation that they like best for their own skin, but, but I think the, uh, the important thing is 
probably go for an SPF of at least, you know, I think during the winter months, I mean, it's a hard sell even for myself. I'm leaving for the office or at work at 7 a.m. and it's dark out and I'm not gonna get back in my car until it's dark out. You kind of going, am I really putting the SPF on? So there's times where if I know I'm just not gonna see the light of day, okay, I'll call. I'll probably just put some antioxidants on my face just in case I get a little bit. But, but most of us aren't outdoor or indoors all day. Most of us are in and out, might, you know, I, 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 and might be sitting by a window, might be in the car for an hour. Then you do put it on. You know, on a November day, I will put SPF on if I'm out walking my dogs and, and doing outdoorsy things, but I may not if it's dark in the morning and dark at night and I'm not seeing the light of day in between. But, but that's rare, so the majority of us are in and out. And so just having a baseline, probably even an SPF 15 to 30, just putting it on as your moisturizer in the morning, maybe a topical antioxidant, you're set, it is your moisturizer, but you're just putting on biologically active compounds, so it's actually gonna protect you and moisturize you at the same time. But, but, but from my perspective, SPF is it's a little confusing. Uh, um, what it basically means is if you were really fair and you, if you were just sitting there in the sun and you would burn in 10 minutes because you were so fair, if you had an SPF of 15, it means that theoretically you could sit out in the sun for 150 minutes or 15 times longer than that 10 minutes before you got that burn. But it doesn't really, it's a little bit nonsensical because an SPF 30 is not twice as good and twice as long. And either is an SPF 50. So I think what ends up happening is, you know, an SPF 30, I think is a good place for most of us to be who are fair. Uh, uh, and I, I think that'll give you about 95% efficacy uh, as long as you're not using it up too quickly. And what I mean by that is the more the sun is hitting you and the particles of the chemical compounds have to absorb and then disperse the, the UV radiation, the quicker you're using it up. Uh, and, and so if, if you're not seeing a lot of light and you're not sweating it off or swimming it off, your, your sunblock can last quite a long time. In the winter, I'm only putting it on once a day. Uh, 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 but, but if I'm out and I'm sweating and I'm doing a lot, my SPF 30 doesn't give me 30 times as long uh, before I burn. So I, I still think the recommendations overall, whether you're using an SPF 30 or 45 or higher, would be for the most part if it's full on sun every two hours. Uh, uh, and if you're swimming and stuff, you know, go for the water resistant. I don't know if there's really such a thing as waterproof. But, you know, it, it, it's still in around that two hours if you're really, really being uh, exposed. Uh, um, so I think the numbering thing really, after a while, I don't understand outside of the fact that people just want to create more products. I think if you're really cancer prone, probably, you know, 30 to 45 or maybe even higher might make you feel better. But I think you still have to keep the frequency up. I think it's just going to increase the efficacy of, of coverage to probably about 95 to 97. But as the numbers go up in that SPF, it's kind of diminishing returns and usually a lot more money spent. Yeah. Uh, in terms, so the chemical uh, blockade, I, up to now, most of this has been chemical. And, and then the mechanical blockades are, you know, if you remember seeing people with the, the big white stripes on their face, the, the kind of zinc oxides or the titanium dioxides, the lifeguards had them. That's a very good block, but a lot of us don't like putting them on our skin because it's all kind of white and pasty looking. The good news is some of the technologies have really improved. So the particle size of, of, of the mechanical blocks are much smaller now. And so they sit on the face a lot better now. Uh, and so the nice thing about mechanical is it just covers everything. It just, everything just kind of, it's a reflector. It just, it's like a mirror. It just bounces it right off of you. So it's gonna take care of a much fuller spectrum of your UVA and UVB. This is more of the traditional uh, 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 chemical SPF that we used to have where there was no coverage for UVA. Here we are, the UVA rays coming in to fry the collagen and some of the melanocytes along the way, and just the UVB, these 5% being radiated off, and, and we're not getting a burn, but look at all the damage. And here we've got you know, either a broad spectrum, which is a combination of the chemical as well as the mechanical, 
or just a straight mechanical block and you'll do that. Uh, so it, it's definitely, you've got to always look for, is this broad spectrum? Am I getting covered for both? And you've got to be careful because there's a lot of women who come into my practice who go, oh, don't worry, Dr. Vanley, I've got like SPF virtually in everything. You know, I got SPF in my, my bug spray. I got SPF in my moisturizer. I got SPF in my foundation that I put on my makeup. I think the problem with some of the F SPF too is you got to realize these are laboratory measures. So when they measure the efficiency of an SPF, you got to put a tablespoon on your face. That's a pretty liberal amount of SPF you got to put on your face to have it be correlating to the SPF that they say it is. Most of us don't even come close to putting a tablespoon on our face or a shot glass on our body, not even close. So, you know, I, what I tell the women who say, oh, I've got my SPF 15 on the foundation, it's like, do you tape, put a tablespoon of foundation on your face? And it's like, well, no, I probably put tiny, tiny bit, same with moisturizer. So you think you've got your SPF 15, but you don't. So what I usually tell people is don't confuse matters. There's nothing wrong if you have a foundation or a moisturizer with some SPF in it. But, but don't take it at face value that you're getting that coverage because you're probably putting on scant amounts compared to what a laboratory would tell you you would need to put on in order to actually get that coverage. So my, my answer to that is get a great SPF, put it on, have it be your moisturizer, maybe add that, you know, that vitamin C and E that moisturize you and also supercharge your, you know, your, your, your uh, SPF and forget the moisturizers. Uh, and then you know I've got an SPF 30 on my face. You can put anything you want on top of that. But, but then you at least know what you're dealing with rather than there's a lot of smoke and mirrors that goes on. So how about these antioxidants? Do they really work? Well, I think, I think yes. I, I, you know, I, I think that the good news is the formulations are getting a lot better. The bottom line is our skin is designed as, uh, to keep the outside world out. So you can't just slap any kind of vitamin E on your face or Retin-A, uh, which is basically vitamin A or uh, vitamin E, C, any of those. They have to be specially formulated to not, uh, not oxidize as soon as they're out in the world and to actually penetrate your skin so that they can actually be taken up by collagen or by your cells to actually do something. So I think the early antioxidants, you kind of go, oh, you know, maybe helps a little bit. But I, I do think the, there's some good studies coming out in some of the dermatology literature especially vitamin E and vitamin C, they actually work synergistically together. Uh, and the beauty of them is they work very much like your sunscreen does. They don't undo damage, but what they do is if you're getting, you know, you're, you're getting your lovely fry here, you're doing all this damage, you're creating all these free oxygen radicals because you're doing cellular damage. You're actually doing damage to cell membranes, to the DNA, there's a lot of repair that your body's going through. It's like, ouch. And so you've got a, a lot of free oxygen radicals going on. So antioxidants are the best way to neutralize that. So what I often tell people, because I think the biggest way we often miss out is we don't apply our sunscreen as frequently as we should. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of one of those people who feels like I've done a good deed if I put it on once. Uh, and, you know, if I'm really out, I might think about it a few hours later. So. So it's hard to stay on it every two hours, especially if you're kind of dressed for work and you've got makeup on and stuff like that. It's kind of, you know, the, the idea of putting more on seems counterintuitive. But the antioxidants, I think, are a really nice safety net. They're great for skin. Uh, and uh, if some of those rays have made it through because my chemical SPF isn't working so well anymore because it's, it's been too long, I'm actually getting some damage, this stuff starts kicking in. So it's kind of my security blanket or my way to supercharge a, a broad spectrum SPF. The nice thing as well is if you think from an anti-aging point of view, collagen uh, remodeling and elastin remodeling by fibroblasts one of the precursors for all this remodeling, including wound remodeling, is vitamin C. Uh, and so if you've got formulations that uh, are on your skin, not only is it good for collagen and just good skin health, but it's, it, but it's, it's what's protecting you against, uh, uh, or at least helping you neutralize damage that makes it through your sunblock. So, you know, this is certainly uh, you know, kind of what I got raised with of let's get some suntan lotion. I remember I think when we were kids, it was either baby lotion and then maybe in my teenage years, I got up to an SPF 8. 
you know, nothing stronger because heaven forbid something should get in the way of your tan. Uh, it was funny because I was at a, a store the other day and people had a special and they said, do you want to buy suntan lotion? I went, is there still a thing? Like, do people actually buy suntan lotion? Really? And she goes, it's an SPF 30. And I went, I think that's a sunscreen. Okay. All right. So, but, but, but I think, you know, we know suntans should be passe. We're not looking for suntan lotion. We're either looking for that mechanical block or a broad spectrum SPF. Uh, probably, I think, for the majority of us who are fair, uh, uh, start at a 30 and you'll just be covered well. And then if you're out a lot, apply it every two hours. And f don't forget all these huge amount of skin cancer, especially on the lower lip. Uh, huge amount for men on their balding skin or of their scalp and, and the ears. I, uh, the men come, I have way more men in my practice from a skin cancer point of view. I don't think it's just because they're outdoors more. I think it's just there's more exposure. Uh, I think hair must be somewhat protective because I, I rarely see a skin cancer on a woman's scalp or on her ears. Uh, maybe women wear hats more often too, I'm not sure. I'm trying to get men away from the baseball cap and into the Tilly hats with a brim. Uh, it just really protects the ears way better. And, and, the, and the back of the neck. Good allies uh, over and above your broad spectrum sunscreen. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a tightly woven hat uh, so that those UV rays actually get reflected. Uh, good uh, 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 sunglasses that really will block the UV light. You can get melanomas in your eyes, especially if you're fair. You, uh, uh, we've got very delicate thin skin around our eyes. This is a big corridor for basal cell skin cancers. And I've had a couple here myself. Uh, but I spent a lot of time in this area taking away basal cell skin cancers because people go, oh, I don't want it too close to my eyes. And so you're better off just putting, you know, uh, good glasses on. You also don't get as many wrinkles because you're not busy squinting all day long. So I, I think, you know, it, it's, it's good from a, a point of view of not having to squint all day to protect your, your retina from melanoma, but also uh, just to protect that really thin skin. And then really think about, you know, Really think about being smart. There's so much time to be outdoors on these long days. You know, the shoulder times are such nice times. You know, in the morning, do your gardening, do the golf game or whatever. But to be out from 10 to 3 in blazing hot sun, if you don't, if you're not working and, and it's lack of choice, it's kind of like that's pretty hard for, you know, you, at that point you want to really institute hardcore hats, SPF clothing, or regular clothing. I was actually quite disappointed to find this out. Um, I used to think just wearing a cotton long-sleeved or linen top would be, I wouldn't need to SPF below it. It's only an SPF of three. So I was pretty disappointed to hear that. So the UV rated clothing, so for people who truly need to be out there, uh, is you know, that, that can go up to about an SPF 30. But regular clothing doesn't have as much. So again, the UVB isn't making it through. We're not getting a burn in our clothed areas. The UVA likely is making it through. So common misconceptions, just an ending. I tan easily, so obviously it can't be harmful. You know, I, only the burners get into problems and very wrong. And, and I, I was really wrong about that for the first 30 years of my life. I have dark skin, you know, uh, uh, so I must be protected. Well, yes, uh, people who are very darkly pigmented uh, I have probably an SPF of 15 naturally. But that's not that much protection if you're getting extreme sun. So people who are dark skinned still get skin cancers, probably not as frequently, but they also get a lot of problems with hyperpigmentation if they get too much exposure. Uh, often if they get a melanoma, and they can, uh, it's usually more severe because they miss it. Uh, our index of suspicion uh, for a melanoma in a, in a person of color is much lower, and the chances are higher that that melanoma is going to run further amok before it gets diagnosed. So, I, you know, I think they don't have to be quite as vigilant, uh, 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 but they still have to think about SPF. And my best friend is South Korean, and she's always got SPF on just because I might wrinkle as a blonde person, but she hyperpigments, so there's, there's good reason. Uh, uh, to have SPF on, regardless of skin color. All that SPF can't be good for you. Uh, I've heard that all the time. It's like, oh, I heard there's terrible things and it's not good for you. Well, skin cancer is worse for you. And, and so I, I think uh, there's not, uh, uh, you know, I think the formulations are quite safe. And I think the relative risk to benefit ratio 
uh, is, is such that I, I think you're uh, better off putting SPF on. I think much less harm will be done to you than if you let the, the UV radiation uh, run amok. I've already got all these wrinkles and liver spots, and I think it's just a natural part of aging. What's all the fuss about? Well, you don't have to have all those. Uh, you know, you really can prevent most of them. Uh, I need the vitamin D. I don't want to put all that SPF on. Don't worry. Most of us aren't religious enough about our SPF. There's lots of vitamin D being made. Uh, and so, and then if you're really worried about it, but the only time I supplement for vitamin D, there's great supplements now, is in the winter months. But yeah, almost all of us are going to get plenty of vitamin D, even if we're SPF through, because some of it's just going to get through. Uh, damage is already done. That's a little fatalistic, uh, you know, to say, oh, well, who cares? And, and it's cold and rainy. That's the big one. That's the hardest one to really talk people into wearing an SPF. So uh, that's our take home message. You know, you're going to wear it uh, first thing in the morning before you even leave the home. Uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get activated. So I think the best thing to do is truly uh, uh, have it by, you know, on your vanity. You wash your face, you put it on. Uh, so for me, it's vitamin C in the summer and then my SPF and I'm done for the day. In the winter, I need a little bit more moisture. So I do a combination of vitamin C and E because uh, it's more moisturizing. And then I put on my SPF, but it's just, I might do an SPF 45 in the summer and a 30 in the winter. But it, it's basically, that's, that, that, that's all she wrote in terms of skincare. And if you get used to putting it on before you even leave home, then it's not that, oh, I forgot. Uh, because if you think about, you know, you're strolling off to the golf course, you're walking out to the tee, uh, you've been out there for 20, 30 minutes, and now you're putting it on, you've just had 30 minutes of just unprotected time, and or you're going to the beach, you're setting up, you're doing it, okay, let's lather up now. And then it takes about 15, 20 minutes to kick in, you're getting a lot of UV radiation. Uh, if you're really doing that sun stuff, the idea is just top to bottom, naked, before you put your clothes on in the morning, if you're truly going to be that exposed, because your clothes changes position too. So you're much better off just doing the full lather, the full body's going to be exposed, like on a beach, uh, before you leave home, because then it's activated when you walk out the door. The beauty of the mechanical blockades uh, is they're instantly effective. So if you buy something that's truly, you know, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, I carry a little, I think it's Sun Forgettables. It's a mineral powder thing. So if, it, if I wear my SPF, but then I end up on a terrace for lunch, I throw the powder on, it's instantly uh, effective. So, so, and you're not having to worry about smudging stuff on if you have, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but it's not like it's gonna get in the way of stuff. So I think the physical blocks are great uh, because it's instant coverage as soon as you put it on. Uh, and, and so you're not, you don't have these windows of a half hour here or there where you've truly not been covered. And remember, there's a big difference between skin biology and how it ages and how, how well it actually is and how well it's behaving. It has everything to do with how you treat it. So preserve what you have and preventative measures are the best way to have good skin. Any questions at all? Oh, this is a test. It's cold and wet. Are you wearing your sunscreen today? Everyone says yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Yes. sure what that is. There are uh, special formulations. They're hard to just get off a shelf at, let's say, a shopper's drug mart. Uh, I, uh, they often get sold by dermatologists or plastic surgeons. It's not like they're medical grade, but they're kind of somewhere in the middle. But they're special formulations uh, that, that are truly just, you know, 15% uh, you know, ascorbic acid but made so that it's not going to oxidize as soon as you take it out of the bottle. And it can come in powder forms or liquid forms. Uh, and then there's, you know, coffee berry. There's a bunch of antioxidants uh, topically. Uh, uh, but I think I, just my quick peruse through the Shoppers Drug Mart, there's not a lot of that just globally available. But I think most dermatologists, most plastic surgeons will carry it. And you don't need to, like, have an appointment with them to buy it from them. Is there a certain brand of sunscreen that you would recommend that would be higher in zinc content? Sorry, say that again? A certain brand of sunscreen. 
of, of sunscreen that's With higher the in the mechanical block. Yeah, I was. I actually asked uh, um, uh, one of my staff to look that up because I, I kind of am all set in my ways in terms of what I use. And I, so I think the one that we found that had the highest amount of straight uh, zinc oxide and uh, um, titanium dioxide was the Neostrata. So it's got a, a SPF of about 45, uh, and so it's a great broad spectrum one, uh, and lots of mechanical block. And I, I think uh, um, uh, my laser tech has used that uh, quite a bit uh, on a personal level. She said it sits on her skin really well, because I think that's what kept some of the people from wanting to take it on, because it was all kind of milky and white looking, but the formulations are getting much better. Um, that was great public service, thank you, and the Thanks. graphics were beautiful. Uh, <laughs> my question is about, we have a bit of a choir here, and do you have any thoughts about how we can take the message to the young people, the high schoolers and the students, because that's where the damage is being done in the future. Like I liked your dental analogy, yeah. we need to make it cool somehow, but yeah. do you have any thoughts of how we can broaden the audience here I, I, th I think it's um, I think it's a real hard one it's kind of like telling a young person not to smoke because they're just not going to get into trouble for decades and it's actually fun uh, and you feel good uh, you know because anything looks good on a teenager anyway uh, uh, you know and um, you know I think the most compelling ones are you know if, if they if they if you had a young person speak to them about their melanoma uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, because I, I, I think those, that's more compelling than having a mid-50s gal talk about, you know, uh, because I, I, I know that myself. I know what I did in my first 30 years, and I, I, I know I would have been pretty deaf to the messaging as well, even if the messaging was there. I think at the time we thought it was okay. Uh, uh, but, but um, yeah, I, I think it would actually be most effective if there was actually you know, uh, one or two kind of uh, uh, um, young people who actually had, you know, maybe been to a tanning bed and had a melanoma, or when they hear that, then it becomes like real. Uh, I, I think otherwise, I think it's a pretty hard sell. I'm still amazed that I have people coming in who are my age to my office and, you know, oh, I just got back in there, like, they're looking like that, you know, something about Mary photo, and you're just, and it's really hard not to go, what, what do you, you know, you know, like, you should know better. I mean, it's one thing for an 18 year old, because you kind of expect them to have attitude, but, but it, it's, uh, uh, you know, that sense of invincibility, but when you see people with the leathery, crepey skin just going for the deep tan, you're going, really? You know, and but it, but you know, it, it's that's an easier one to preach to because they're usually going to come in. Maybe if they haven't been hit by skin cancer yet, they might come in for vanity measures, and then they kind of do the oh, you know, when they realize oh, well, perhaps I'm doing some damage here. It's, yeah, I don't have a better answer than that. I think it's a hard sell. Anyone else? I just. Um, with the SPF, spray versus a lotion or a cream, any difference? I think it, it's what sits well for you. I think the sprays are nice uh, to get over big surface areas, especially you know if you haven't got someone to rub your back for you. I think it's a nicer way to get good coverage. Uh, and so I think sprays work really well. Also on little kids who are squirmy and all that good stuff. Uh, I, I, but I, I think uh, a lot of the, the creams can feel good on the body, but might be a little bit much for the face. Right. Uh, and, you know, because I, I think if we, especially if you think on a, you know, day to day, we're more like this. You know, I, what I always tell people is don't stop at the jawline. Like, you know, and the messaging is go right into the hairline. Well, most of us probably aren't going to do that because we want our hair to look pretty good. But, you know, the, the idea is to at least try and get a little bit into the ear. I, another point that I haven't mentioned is definitely wear something on your lips. Um, I, I definitely wear a mechanical block on my lips. I just, uh, it's got an SPF of 35. Uh, it's clear and then I just put, you know, lip gloss or whatever I'm wearing on top of that because lip gloss and lipstick does not protect you from sun. In fact, it can even intensify things a bit. 
But yeah, so I think that has a lot to do with your comfort measures, you know, your skin type. Uh, and so I think the big thing is looking at, uh, you know, my co being covered for both uh, UVA and UVB, and then really uh, figuring out that a lot of the formulations have a lot to do with just what works for you. Yeah, I wear a cream on my body when I'm out uh, and then a lotion for my face just because it sits better and I don't get breakouts and so on because some of them are too heavy for my face. A little bit of trial and error for people. Um, people that live in oh sorry, uh, people that live in tropical countries. Do you find as many uh, melanomas there? You know, obviously they're darker than we are. Or is it people that live in the northern countries that have more trouble with melanoma? Uh, well, I mean, are, are you asking if people of color yeah, get more melanomas? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Uh, I think probably if you take a look at an Australian population, though, that would be a, a good one to compare to. They've probably got a good mix of what we have as well, uh, of fairly fair people. And that intense sun definitely uh, results in a higher skin cancer and melanoma rate. Uh, uh, but I think if you were to compare us to, you know, uh, a South American or a Latin American country where they're of pigment, one, they're smarter about their sun. Uh, uh, they're not out in it at at these hours where we are. Uh, uh, and so they're avoiding it. Uh, I, um, and they, they, they do have inherent pigment. I think we get into funny psyches. I think of the Northern psyches, you gotta go. You know, we got a three months, let's go. You know, and you get a little bit of that warrior mode and you just wanna be out as much as you can. And so those bursts of, of extreme exposure uh, can set us up more. But I think just the Australians, you know, it's just brutally hot there and it's almost always sunny. I, I lived there for 18 months. It was always sunny, never been darker. Uh, you know, that was back in my crazy days. And, and so definitely uh, uh, they have very high rates because I think that's a better control. They, they have more fair skinned people there. Any, any other questions? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,